Welcome, brave adventurer. It's a good day to hunt some goblins. And I have a new quest for you. What? A new quest? Is it goblins? No, no, my friend. It's different this time. It's a good one and it pays well. But be careful. The guy posting it looks shady. Anyways, here is the quest scroll. Today we are going to create this landscape in Unreal Engine and this is what our landscape is going to look like. We'll have our forest, the shrubs, the flower field and water and different types of grass blending together. Now while this may look complex at first, it's really not. The base shape is actually created in about 12 nodes. Now there are a few things that set this landscape apart. The first one obviously is the vegetation. So for all of the vegetation we are using the arboreal node and this time we'll create all sort of vegetation with it and then use all those texture back in Unreal and start simulating our vegetation. Then one of the most asked question for Unreal how to set up the layers. So we'll also do that later in the video. We are not going to go super detail on this because we created a video earlier the texture tiling where we added some micro variation and all that layer setup. So if you want to go more in detail then watch that video and we'll cover just the basic of that material in this video. Okay, so the things that set it apart. So the first one are the vegetation. So these meadows. So the one that had the red color and the yellow color. These are mostly for the flower or just about any vegetation that grows near water. So all of the red blue vegetation is focused more around the flows. And the other feature is the snow. So this snow right here, well, it's melted based on sunlight. So if you look at it from this angle, so this is where we put our sunlight in. So all of the snow that was in this direction got melted and all the snow on the other side is left. And this is the remnant snow. Then there is also our forest and the trees, which are not shown in this one. These are the trees. They are quite dense at the moment. So we can control the density with the procedural foliage spawner. So we don't have to worry about it. It's time to move to the first step. So there we started fresh from a new project. I have kept the Perlin and the Warp node just because of the seed. Because if the seed differs then the shape can change quite a bit. And we want this sort of shape. This is one of the seed. Once we have created all this since it is all procedural you can change one seed and all of the landscape will adapt accordingly. So this seed in Perlin will give us a similar shape as to this. Not exactly the same but similar. Because seed for all kinds of simulation like the erosion and stuff can vary a lot depending on a lot of factors. So the project file for this exact landscape will be uploaded on Patreon along with the complete project file of Unreal. There is also cartography which is a bit out of scope for this video. So I'll put a tutorial on it on Patreon. So this is the map we created with cartography. Okay, so we start with the basic Perlin. I actually have the toolbar collapse. So this is the toolbar. So all of the nodes are here. Let me just collapse it. So if you want to put a node, you can either drag it from toolbar or right click and choose from here or just start typing like Perlin. So there is our Perlin node. It's a bit too tall. So we'll start compressing it with the clamp. So in post process, we'll take clamp and just start clamping it. Something like this. Now the hard difference is more of what we want, but the shapes are still not separated. It looks more like sand. So we'll also shape it down with the shaper node. So it's again in the post process. So this is the shaper. And we'll start taking away some of the shape. So the shape are more separated. So something like this. So now we have these initial mountains. So after the Perlin, we warp it a little bit. Everything is at default. And then surprisingly, we'll use reverse. We discussed this in a really old video, but we can use the river not only for the water, but for carving out the shape. Because the river essentially also do erosion. They take away a lot of stuff. They create valleys and stuff. 
which is exactly what we are going to do here. So we took the river and you can see the river starts pushing this these areas down a bit and we are going to exaggerate that by increasing the down cutting and then increasing the width to a maximum. So the river started carving our shape. Now we are going to fuse the shapes a little bit with the thermal shaper. So the thermal shaper node creates concave or convex shapes depending on the shape slider. So if it's negative then it's creating concave shapes. So we'll increase the influence a bit like so and increase the shape just a little bit so we still get some of the details. Let's warp the shape once again. Again with everything at default. When that's done to get those Mesa type structures that would be created with terraces with erosion on top. So the first step for that is the terraces and we get terraces with a fractal terrace node. So I'll put a fractal terrace. And if you look at it right now, let's change the seat first. Something like this. That is just a lot of terraces. To reduce the effect, we'll use a gradient to modulate it. So we'll right click and search for gradient. So this is the gradient. And if we modulate it. Okay. So we'll right click and pin this. So the gradient is modulating our terraces. Right now it's a bit too much. So we'll clamp the gradient. So the effect is reduced. So something like this maybe. And now let's try a different seed. Then after the fractal terrace, we'll unpin this by clicking F and then search for the erosion node. Beautiful, beautiful erosion. With erosion, what we'll do is, we'll have a lot of sediments first. So now the landscape is filled with all these sediments and with the sediment removal, we'll remove most of them. Now if you look at these mountains, they are eroded but the shape is not changed much. We'll use another erosion to erode it further. This is the default but this time we don't want to lose all these details, sediments and just the lower floor of the erosion. So we only want these mountain shapes to be eroded but we want to keep the floor. So for that we'll use min mod. So with erosion Think of it as there is a surface and then erosion will take away sediments and the sediments will start to deposit on the lower surface. So between the surface and the sediments, the surface is lower. So if we take minimum, those sediments are gone and we only get the eroded shapes, the mountains that were eroded. So if you look at before and after, these mountains are eroded but we still get that lower ground from the previous erosion. Now for the snowfall, we'll bring a snowfall node. Okay, that's a lot of snow. So we'll move the snow line just a bit above. Maybe just a little bit more. So there is no snow here. And now with this, let's increase the settle to 94. Okay, and maybe increase the intensity a bit. And now to melt it from one side, we'll use the sunlight node. So this node gives the sunlight of a particular day of the year. We'll just keep it at default and input this in the melting input. So if you don't know which one the melting is, we'll go over each of these and it shows the name of it. So this is snowfall, this is melt and this is mask. Another way is just to drop it on the node and it will give us the name of all the inputs. So we'll choose melt and it's connected on the mat. Let's pin this as underlay. And if you look at it, so the sunlight is coming from there. So here there is no sunlight. So the snow that is here will not melt and the snow here will start melting. And now we'll increase the melting. And just like that, all the snow from here is gone and we still have that snow. 
Now maybe let's decrease the snow line a bit. Just like this and maybe increase the intensity. And finally it's time for water. So for water we'll use the reverse first. River. And seed for river does not change like where these rivers are placed because the river will start a rain simulation so the water will start flowing from higher areas and it will eventually end up in areas where river is naturally supposed to be. So even if you change the seed the river will not like uh, cross this mountain from here. Now after the river there is lake. Okay so that's a bit too much. So we limit lake to specific areas. And again river will only form where it's supposed to be. It does not matter where the mask is. So the mask essentially tells this is where rain will fall but the water can go anywhere and it will still end up in lower areas. So we'll pin this river as our underlay. So we'll press G and bring in a mask. Edit mask and maybe we want the river here and here. Just two smaller dots and plug this in the mask. So this is called the rain mask means rain will occur in that area. And we'll click auto apply so that it's applied every time we don't have to manually apply it. And now we increase the rainfall amount. So something like this. Now that is all about the base shape. Now we can take the shape, export it and bring it in Unreal. Congratulations, we've completed the first step. Let's move on to the next one. Polish your swords because it's time for texturing. So bring an FX node and let's rename it as FT. FT is the final train. This is only for textures. If you are exporting it for use in Unreal, then you will export this right here. Because Lake will make these areas flat, you will place your water plane, but you still need the area that is below the lake surface. And depending on how you use the river, you might just want to export the node before it. Just to be safe and so that we don't have to export it again and again, we'll export everything. So I'll put a FX node right here and name it. FO which means final output before river and another FX and name it final output river and this is the final trend and let's make some portals so the first and foremost we need the final terrain and from the lake we need the lake output We'll make the portal and we'll need the lake depth and from river we'll also need the lake depth. Actually let's combine all the water. So we'll take the lake depth and the river depth and another method we'll use max 100% ratio. You can see it because the river and lake are not that deep as compared to the landscape so it's not visible to our eyes. So we'll auto level it. So this is where the lake is and these are the rivers. Hello, I am from the future and I'm here to tell you don't make the same mistake I did. Ask her out. Wait, no, that's not why I'm here. Then why are you here? Ah yes, the lake note. Instead of lake hard mask, we put lake depth mask in the combine. Honest mistake. Simply replace the input of FX node to the second output of lake instead of third. If you want you can auto level it in advance with the FX node. Auto level it. And same goes for the river. Let's put the mask out of the way. And for the rivers, these rivers are cutting into the snow. But we might not want that. So you can have the water before the snowfall or you can subtract it from the river mask. So with this FX, we'll take the snow output, the snow snow and subtract it. So all the river that was overlapping the snow right here is now gone. Now we'll take this and combine it with the lake output. Again with the max mode. 
now let's rename it combine water and make a portal and this is our water and we'll also need the snow pole so we'll take the snow output and make it as a portal and what else and maybe this erosion flow as well it can be used as an extra detail for our textures so we'll also export this erosion flow f3 and combine water f3 and final train final output without river and with river fx and choke point are lightweight nodes they add no extra processing to your graph so feel free to put as many of them as you like another good thing about using fx you see how we use fx for every mask and every portal we make not every well mostly we do this because later if we have to change any portal we won't have to redo all the connections as your graph grows bigger you have more and more portals and if you have to change just one of them then you have to redo all those connections again and again by using fx you only have to change the input of fx node so we'll rename it as base shape and create a new graph and call it color and with the fx node we'll connect it to the ft portal and pin this as underlay and now all our textures will be applied on this node right here so we'll start with our favorite texture node really simple and really powerful and we'll make it as portal because we'll use this texture for all the set maps and begin a set map node okay this looks good and for grass we'll use another set map and under library from rocky we'll go to green and choose something greener like this and now we'll combine it with the laziest method slope blending now this is only temporary later when we are doing our vegetation we'll use all those masks from there but for now for a simple texture we'll use the slope node so this is our slope let's decrease the slope to cover more areas and use this as a mask okay i don't like this color It will do for now. Now let's bring in our water. So for the mask we'll use the combined water. And if we increase the blend to 100%. And all the black areas is where that water is. And I think we made a mistake. So we'll go back to the base shape. And instead of using depth, we should have used this lake mask. Because this is actually the hard mask. This is what the lake covers. Depth is the actual depth of the lake. This is where the lake is and this is the river. For the color, let's bring in an FX node and actually go back and make this depth as a portal. And now connect that lake depth. Auto level it and use a clutter node. Now this node is what will give us the color variation. So we'll use this sort of dark color for this and overall a light color and combine it with the water there it is our beautiful water so now we'll right click and pin this so we can make some adjustment to our clutter we'll make another handle by clicking just here I'm giving a slightly darker color and make it even darker okay this looks good for now and after water is our snow so we'll bring in combined node 100% blend 
and this time we'll connect it to the snow portal. So there is our snow portal and instead of blend we'll use max. Max will take the maximum of both color but since the snow mask is white we'll only add the snow part to it. And by the way we forgot to unpin this so I'll press F here and F again to unpin it. There. There is our snow, there is our water and there is this boring slope blending. Now to make it a teeny tiny bit more interesting, we'll add some variation using flow. Not necessary since we'll do the texturing again with the vegetation, but it looks good. So I have added. So we'll bring a set map node and connect it to the texture portal. Okay, this color is good and combine it. 100% and for the mask we'll use flow and connect it to our terrain which is FT. There we have our flows and use this as mask. That's a bit too much so we'll use the shaper in post process to shape it down. More. Yeah. And don't forget to connect it to water. That's good for now. So let's move to the next step. So we'll mark this as export. Mark the slope as export. So all the mask will be our export. And here the combined water, which is right here, will be our mask. So this is our river. So we'll name it river. Mark this for export and as for the snowfall, we'll take the snow output, bring in FX node and F3 mark for export. So if your node has this yellow circle, that means it's marked for export. The shortcut is F3 or right click and mark for export. So we have our erosion, we have our snow, we have our river we have our, we don't have our lake. So we'll take this FX and connect it to the lake. Okay, this is our lake. And lake mask, F3 mark for export. Do not hesitate to export any mask. If you think you may or may not need this mask, export it. Always have extra mask. You never know when you'll need one and trust me, you wouldn't want to rebuild the entire landscape for a single mask that you are missing. On a similar note, let's say you ignore this advice, which you shouldn't, and you have to export a texture map. So instead of rebuilding the entire base shape, instead import your landscape from your height map. Similarly, if you need a mask or a height map from the base shape, then remove all the connections for texture. That way, you only build what you need. Okay, we have everything we need for now. So let's go to the build tab. Let me expand this. And everything is PNG 8. If you have some other format right here, by default I think you'll have TIFF. So you'll click this and change it to PNG 8 bit. Yes, same for the color graph, PNG 8. So for all the masks we'll use PNG 8 and for all our landscape, the height map output, we'll use 16-bit PNG. So 16-bit PNG is for uh, final output before river, river and FT. So we'll change only these three to 16-bit PNG. And that should do it. Check the method and resolution. Looks good. And range set to normalized. We'll start building this. Congratulations, you've completed your landscape. Now, all that's left is to bring it to Unreal Engine. So let's move to the next step. And we'll have different vegetation depending on where we are. So like in the forest, we'll have our shrubs and then we move in our fields, there are flowers and different grass blending. We'll do all that with the arboreal node. So let's start fresh in an empty level. 
Here are all the maps that we'll create with the Arborial node. But for the landscape that we just created, these are all the maps. If you are following along, then I'll put all these maps down in the video description so you can download. So to start importing our landscape, we'll go to the landscape mode. And let's actually address the landscape material first. So right now this material has all these layers set up. So to create such a material, we'll go into the content browser, right click and create a new material. Let's call it test landscape. Now we are not going to go super deep into this because we already did that in the texture tiling video. So if you want a better material with some texture variation so you don't get any tiling and all the layer setup, then check out that video. Back to this, we'll drop a layer blend node. So landscape layer blend, there it is. Right now it's empty, so let's make some layers and we'll name them. So let's say grass and forest, lake and snow. Now the layer blend node gives us a material attribute. So we can either create a break material attribute here, then we can match our base color metallic specular or we'll click this and take use material attribute so it will take this as an input now we have created the layers but we need to have textures in each layer so right now if we were to paint a grass layer in our landscape then it would just be black because there is nothing connected to it so to do that we'll create a make material attribute now this also takes material attribute as its input so for the grass, this is what we'll use. And for base color and all that, we'll get our textures from Megascan. So once we download any texture from Megascan, so let's say this grass texture, we'll get three maps, the diffuse, the normal and ORD map. ORD stands for occlusion, roughness and displacement. So it has all three in different color channels. So we'll take all three and put it in our material. And there are all our textures. Now for the UVs, we'll take landscape layer coordinate and under mapping scale, this is what the resolution of your landscape is. Since we are using a 1009 by 1009, we'll put 1009 here. So this UV means it will apply this texture exactly one time on the whole landscape. And if you want to create different tiles, then you'll multiply it with the scalar value called tiling, maybe 100 for now. You can look at your landscape and adjust this tiling based on what looks best for you. But for now, let's input all these into UVs. And now the diffuse goes in the base color, then the normal map goes in normal, occlusion, roughness and displacement. So occlusion is in the red channel and roughness is in green and displacement is in blue. So if you are height blending then you will need this displacement. And if you are using ambient occlusion then it goes into the ambient occlusion. Now all of this is a grass material. Similarly you will create your material for the forest, lake, snow and then connect all these into these layers. So now if you'll paint grass, then this texture will be applied wherever that layer is. Let's connect the same in all of these so we don't get an error. And now let's save it. Okay, there you go. You have your material and of course it's going to be a lot more complex than this, but this should get you started. Now if you want to create your complex one, then go watch that video. Now if you put our material right here, it was test landscape. There it is. We have our grass, forest, lake and snow. So let's put our material back. Now this is a custom created material. It has the grass maps, the texture variation and all these different layers with all those adjustments, the slope blending and RVT and all that setup for you. 
Now this landscape material will be uploaded along with these project files on Patreon. It is also part of the island video. We are using the same material for any type of landscape and if you need more texture then you will add a new layer and copy all that and just change this texture and it will do all that for you. Step completed. I did not think you would get this far with that rusty sword but I see great potential in you now. Let's move to the next step. Now with that out of the way, let's import our file. So our height map goes here and we'll use this fo underscore river for it. We'll click enable edit layers. And now to match our scale, the scale in Unreal which is 100, 100, 100. A default means two things. So the X and Y scale, which is the same, is the height map resolution. So it's one meter per pixel. So our height map has 1009 pixel. So it is 1009 meter by 1009 meter. And in Z100 means 512 meter. Since we know that Unreal uses 512 meter, so our landscape in Gaia, we try to keep it low and it's almost 500 meter. So we don't need to change it. If your landscape is like a lot taller, like maybe 800 meter, then you'll use this formula. So I'll put 800 meter, then multiply it by 100, so two more zero, and divide by 512. So that gives us a scale of 156.25. Unreal did the math for us, but since our landscape is 500, we'll put 100 for now. To match the scale in X and Y, so this 100 means 1009 meter and our landscape was 5000 meter by 5000 meter. So the same formula applies right here. So we'll put 5000 meter, then multiply it by 100, so two more zero, and divide it by the height map resolution, which is 1009. If we are using default terrain definition, then this scale will be the same for all our landscapes. Now our height map takes care of all these. So we don't need to change it and then we'll simply click import. So there we have our landscape. It needs some lights and for lights as usual we'll go to window then click the environment light mixer create our skylight, atmosphere light, sky atmosphere, volumetric cloud and height fog. There we have our lighting. We'll turn off height fog for now and let's save it. So we'll create a new folder light and post and put everything except the landscape in there they are good now since we have real-time virtual textures turned on for the landscape we have to put the virtual textures if you don't have that setup don't worry about it it simply captures our landscape and uses that as a texture that we can apply so it's a little bit better for performance so with the landscape selected, we'll move down a bit. And in virtual texture, we'll add two. So the first one is for the color. Now this is a real-time virtual texture to create your own. In the content browser, right click. And under texture, there is runtime virtual texture. Now we already did it for all these. So we'll use the color. Now this one captures the color of the landscape and then we use that texture inside our landscape material and the second one captures the height so we capture the height to blend different things with our landscape so say something like a boulder it will have different textures so at the corner it does not match with the landscape but by using this height data we can take this texture and start blending it the texture of the boulder so it blends a little bit nicer you don't have to worry about real-time virtual texture for now then after these two are created, we'll click create volumes. So it will create these two volumes. This is the volume in which it will capture all those details. So we'll just move it out of the way. Everything under light and post. Let's move to the next step. And let's move down a bit. So this has the vegetation setup inside the material. 
don't worry about it just now we'll turn it off and by the way this ugly looking texture for now I'm using this to give an extra depth at distance so it won't be visible close to us but if you are looking at a distance then it just looks a little bit nicer we don't have to worry about tiling because it's rare we look at our landscape from this angle and even if we do it will be covered with trees it won't be as visible and from close to the ground it's barely visible now let's start the texturing process so under landscape paint we'll create layer info for all the textures we need the first one is our cliff so we'll click this plus create info and we'll create a weight blended layer so the weight blended and non weight blended are a bit different weight blended means that if it is a cliff texture and we apply a grass texture on top of it then if the grass texture overpowers it so if we apply cliff texture everywhere then the value of that layer is 1 at every point and if we apply our grass texture in lower slopes then that means the value for grass would be 1 at that point so at each point there will be exactly one texture so that grass on lower slopes will replace that cliff material so with weight blended layer the order of textures matter and with non blended it will stack everything on top and will not replace any layer that we currently have so we'll use weight blender for now so it applied our rock texture everywhere and then we'll need the moss the lake flow and snow maybe take another flow for our rivers and that's about it we don't have to fill all these nails just the ones that we need now after saving it first let's get rid of all these black lights lights black what have i done shadows i meant shadows so under light post there is skylight and we'll change the capture to real time capture much better now again under landscape mode this time we'll click import from file now if you are creating textures for the first time so we just created the landscape and jumped straight to the texture then we have our height map file right here and if you see the grid right here then it is matching exactly the landscape but if you're doing it for the second or third time then you might not have it here then you apply your texture and you wonder like why is it not applying everywhere so to apply it we'll need to load the height map file you don't need to load the exact height map file just a similar one like any 1009 by 1009 will do because the scale will match it up to what we have in this landscape so we loaded our this before river it does not matter which one we load just make sure that it matches our landscape which it is then don't forget to untick this if it is ticked then it will import a second landscape from this height map which is not what we want right now so we'll untick this but it is necessary to have this and this grid which is matching the landscape now we'll expand these layers and we have all these layers that we need so we'll take all those that we need so we need the cliff but it is applied everywhere so we don't need to import a texture for now so we'll need the moss then the flow lake and snow that's about it now we start uploading our mask here remember what we did in Gaia we used the slope to blend it so we'll use slope and for the lake we'll use the lake mask and for the snow we'll use the snowfall and the flow top we'll use for our rivers and our flow bottom we'll use for our erosion now these are all the textures we need now we'll untick all these and then we'll keep moss because remember in Gaia the first texture that we applied after rock was the moss so with moss ticked on we'll click import and if we move down there is our rock and moss blending next after most was our erosion which is flow bottom for now so we'll import this actually erosion is barely visible 
we used flow right here. And this is a great opportunity. If you mess things up, just like what I did right now. So let's upload the flow right here. And if you mess things up to start over, you'll go to the cliff, right click and fill layer. Then it will remove all texture and put rock everywhere. So we are back to where we started. Now with moss, we'll click import from layer. And this time we'll do it right. So for moss, we'll import. And same as before, we are blending these two. Then our flow. And this texture is applied on all those flow areas. And after that, we'll put another for our rivers. So wait for it. And these are our rivers. After the river is our lake. So remember the lake should be after the river. So the lake overrides where the river is meeting the water. So in areas like this. And then finally is our snow. So we'll take the snow and import. And you know how we messed up the textures and didn't have to restart from all over. We just went to paint and fill that layer with rock and re-imported all those masks. We'll do the same for our vegetation. Now some of the textures will differ based on the vegetation. So we'll create those textures and bring it in. And if we have to create more layers, then we'll do that for our vegetation. So, so far what we have done is created the base shape in Gaia, textured it, bring in all those masks from Gaia to Unreal, created our landscape in Unreal, applied all those textures and matched our skill. So this landscape now is the same what we had in Gaia. We also learned how to set up different layers. Since you've come this far, let me tell you a secret. Come closer. Do you get those weird triangles in your landscape? Why, yes, you do. And do you want to get rid of them? Of course you do. They are literal incarnations of evil. And we defeat evil sometimes. So let's move to a bonus step. Let's come to the issue which everyone faces when we import a landscape. From any height map, no matter where it is created, the problem is same for all. Which is these annoying triangles. Don't worry about these weird lines. This is because we are using a 1K texture stretched over all our landscape for our variation. If we export it a higher resolution, then this error will go away. So we have to smooth these out manually. And it's easier if you do it before applying the textures because after applying texture, the texture get in way and you don't know where exactly this is. But if there is no texture, then you can spot it from far. You'll have to lower your light a little bit to spot all these. We'll go to the landscape mode and under sculpt, we'll choose smooth and have a lower value for this smooth. And then we just move our brush over it once and it will smooth everything. Now don't go overboard with the smoothing value or you'll lose some detail from the landscape. Now we have to manually do it for all the triangles that we see. It's hardly a 4-5 minute process. The project file from Gaia including the cartography and the vegetation is already uploaded on Patreon. Congratulations! You completed the quest and I see you learned some new skills. And you know what they say, skills unused get rusty just like your sword. Anyways, go see the guild receptionist to receive your reward. In the meantime, let me tell you about some of the legendary adventurers to join our guild. That's all the fun for this time. Join me next time to simulate vegetation and create maps from the vegetation to derive our textures. I'll see you next time. Until then, enjoy what you're doing.